Hi, it's Richard Barrett for Guitarist here, and I want to show you the PRS Silver Sky SE. So the reason for the SE suffix is that this is the version that's made under license in Indonesia. And though this isn't a direct comparison with the US made, there are a couple of differences which I will highlight. I guess what I would normally do is start at the headstock and work my way down. So as you'll see, it's the same reverse PRS headstock that you've got on the US Silver Sky. No locking tuners, but these are a plastic button, silver plastic button, and they've got a Cluson type back on them. So they're very much the kind of thing that you would expect to see on this type of guitar. As you'll see, SE proudly displayed on the headstock. Now working down, the nut is more like the size and width that you would find on the standard PRS line. The US Silver Sky has a more traditional thin style nut, so this is more standard PRS. It's artificial bone rather than real bone. The neck itself is a very carefully shaped, beautifully rounded profile as we go down, apparently slightly slimmer than the US version. And it's a bolt-on, like the US version. Subtly different shaping to the heel, but nevertheless it's very comfortable on this guitar and allows you to get your hand around to the high notes. The neck is maple and it's a scarf joint just about here. It's quite hard to see um, just where the head joins the neck. Like the US version, it's a rosewood board. It's a slab board, so it's got a flat bottom rather than the curved veneer type that you get on some fenders. Now the radius is slightly different. This guitar has an eight and a half inch radius, which is different from the US version, which is seven and a quarter inch radius. So this is slightly less round. So presumably would be able to lower the action further on this to get choke free bends. The frets are slightly lower and slightly wider than the US version. They're a nice chunky feel without being jumbo frets. Okay, we should move on to the body. Again, very subtle differences here and there in the shaping, but it looks like the same guitar from a distance. PRS are known for being reluctant to give away too many specifics in the secret source that goes on under the hood. But what we do know is that we've got three single coil pickups. Their vintage output about five and a half K. We've got three alpha pots. Now they all, the, the two tone pots hover around about 200 K. The volume pot is a 300k pot, though it does have a resistor on to tune it down to about 280. So clearly they've been very careful and very specific. They haven't just slapped stuff in there. Five-way selector, slightly different knob than the traditional type, but the function is exactly the same. We have the slightly uh, radiused jack plate, exactly the same part as you get on the US Silver Sky. The vibrato bridge is different because rather than the six point unit that you get on the Silver Sky, we have a two point steel unit with pressed steel saddles and a plug in arm, which you can adjust the tension on so it won't ever rattle around and it will stay where you, where you leave it. Now this is all factory set up so you can see it's not that tight, but I guess that's an easy enough thing to make your own decision about, like adjusting your own car seat before you drive. Now. The action is set at just a shade over one and three quarters of a mil at bass and treble sides. So you need to be fully committed to what you're doing before you get into it, especially bending up at the top. But what I would say the advantage is with that is you get a thicker sound, especially on the treble strings. I might as well demonstrate that now, actually, if I just add a little bit of drive. <laughs> So you really do get a fat single coil sound there.
Speaking of that, and I should refer back to the tone controls, you have a tone control which traditionally would be for the middle pickup and another very well-known design. Here it's for the bridge pickup exclusively and what would be the neck pickups tone control operates on both the neck and the middle. So it's flipped around from what you see in some other modified traditional designs like this, but it means that every pickup has a tone control. Just a couple of extra points before we have a listen to some sounds from it. Unlike the US version, which is an older body, this is Poplar. The guitar is a little bit lighter than its US counterpart at just a hair over seven pounds. Right, well, let's have a, a listen. I've got it plugged into the Studio AC15 and it's set for almost 100% clean. If I really bash, then you'll hear some break up. That's the bridge with everything wide open. And as I bring the tone control down, So you can trim the high end and keep the high end on the um, the middle and neck pickups if you want and flick down to the bridge without it suddenly becoming really piercing. Okay. So no surprises, but it's a nice sound of that type middle pickup. neck and middle. And neck. Let's have a listen now with a bit of drive. I've got uh, a Boss Super Overdrive with me, so let's try that on the bridge. Then up to the bridge and middle. And the middle. So to sum up, it's the kind of sounds that you would expect from this design of guitar, but they are very refined actually, and you can definitely tell that a lot of effort's been put in, like putting resistors on the volume pot to get it just so in terms of the, the impedance of the value. And you really get that feeling when you plug this in and play. Now we've made a track demonstrating some clean and dirty sounds and hope you enjoy it. <coughs> Thank you.